So um, let's get straight into it for your actions and options for 2024. You have, I don't know why I'm singing. So you've got the devil card, right? So one of the things that you do need to be mindful of this year is overdoing it or doing too much. This might be where you, you know, like when something is just kind of overkill. This is, uh, what's the phrase that I heard? It's uh, when you bring a, a, a flamethrower to a baseball match, right? It kind of, it's overkill. It's just not needed. And the thing with the devil card, this can be uh, about obsession. It can be where you really get that sort of, you know, and I don't want to mention it because obviously a lot of people say like, oh, that's so stereotypical for Virgo, but there is an OCD tendency within the sign. And this year, you know, when it comes to your actions and options, what you're doing, how you are presenting yourself in the world, there is a possibility here that you do overdo it. This is maybe where you think you're adding to something and actually this is one of those times where less is going to be more. So you're being urged here with this devil card to really think about where it is that you try to micromanage, where it is that you go overboard, where it is that you go over the top. Now, in terms of what's available to you, the devil card does suggest this year there's gonna be a fair amount of temptations for the Virgos. There might be some moments that really kind of get you somewhat caught up, all right? So you just need to be, and it's not to say don't live, right? Not in the slightest. And it's not to say that you have to completely change your nature. It's just being aware of your nature so that it doesn't get the best of you is kind of the message here. Your new moon is on the 3rd of September at 11 degrees. Your new moon is involved with Saturn in an opposition, right? And uh, the new moon opposing Saturn, there's a reality check here, right, that sees you really rethinking your romantic connections, so you, your partnerships, your contracts, your significant other, how you interact with your relationship partner, so if you're single, this could be highlighting the reason that you are single, whether it's by choice, whether it's, you know, because you can't find anyone, maybe it's the location, whatever the case might be, you start to become very aware of your sort of relationship status. Now, remember your seventh house isn't just relationships it's also partnerships of all kinds right so we're talking personal professional or platonic now that being said um the seventh house is also contracts right so this might be highlighting for you a time where you think to yourself okay i need to rethink some of the connections that i have with people oh, direction yeah. card for each month you know how it works by now and remember your first card out it kind of typifies the whole year ahead that you're going to have all right so and also when it comes to the astrology transits that i'm going to be talking about i won't go into great detail here because you have your astrology cheat sheet all right so uh, without further ado let's see what the year has in store for you for your first month out you have the star card right this is beautiful because it suggests that this year you have a bright beautiful year ahead of you remember the star card is a glimpse right it's not the thing itself it's not the future is now it basically says if you continue working as hard as you're working doing what you're doing right now on the path that you you are currently on the results look like this. So pay attention to those little glimpses and those little shivers up your spine or those moments where the universe whispers in your ear to say, you're going the right way. Keep doing this or keep doing that. Or you, you know, have though, you know, you maybe you're doing something really important and you have like a little reverie. Um, it's a bit morbid, but I'm going to share this with you to give you an, a, a, an, an understanding of what I mean. Um, Sorry, I don't have a better example, <laughs> but I think it will illustrate the point quite nicely. Um, so when I was, uh, many years ago now, well, I say many years, it was about five, six years ago. No, it might have been even seven or eight at this point. Gosh, time moves so quickly. I was at my grandfather's funeral and I remember being stood there um, in the church and I was just kind of closed my eyes for a second and you know, just to, to be present, right? And my mind took me forward into the future uh, and I was stood in a suit and I was at my, it was, you know, very sad, but I was at my mother's funeral. And it was like a, a moment to say, like, it, it's all part of the cycle, right? It's you, you find yourself, and it was like that glimpse into the future, really, like, I was like, whoa, you know, like, and I mean, I've been prone to visions my whole life, as well as dreams, but 
This isn't about me, this is about you. This month, uh, this year, right, you are gonna have moments where you can envision the future, where you can see, where you will have moments that just kind of speak to you, right? That you, the, you know, you get the goosebump moments, right? It's, there's gonna be a lot of those this year. The star card is a beautiful card. It's hopeful, it's joyous, it's bright, it speaks to the future. And it says that this year you really, do, there is hope for your year to be one of the best yet, okay? Now, in terms of January, on the 2nd of January, we start the year with a Mercury retrograde. This is important for you more than anybody else because Mercury is your ruling planet. Now, it ends very early on the, on the 2nd of January. So there's none of this like, oh, you know, slow start to the year that we had to for 2023. There's none of that at all it's straight in uh, what I love most about this um, is you we all come into the year much clearer and it is going to be like a you know it's very usually it's like one year bleeds into the other we won't have that this year 2024 is very much its own year and it starts you know from the get-go on the 21st of uh, January, we are going to have Pluto move back into the sign of Aquarius right so it's going to dip in once more, give us another little taster, a little tease, uh, <laughs> Pluto the tease, um, and then it comes back into Capricorn on the, like the 8th of September, and then we'll go into Aquarius once more in uh, November on, I think it's November the 20th, um, and then it goes into Aquarius for like the next 20 years. So this is coming out, or is going into your sixth house of your day-to-day -day routines, also your physical health and vitality, all right? So you make sure you look after yourself this year. Uh, and then, you know, on top of that, oh, let's give these a good shuffle. Let's see what's coming up for you. Ooh, nearly. <laughs> All right, so to clarify on this, you have the Seven of Wands, right? So you are, not only are you getting glimpses into the future, but you are going to see in January what you are wanting and willing to fight for and potentially what you need to fight for. Now, the Seven of Wands can speak to the immune system and the Star Card speaks to the nervous system. So I will say from the get-go in January, these are the two aspects of yourself that you wanna spend this whole year really fortifying, okay? When we come into February, you have your full moon of the year. So what were you putting into motion around birthday season of 2024, uh, 2023? What were you setting into motion at this time, right? What were you starting to really sort of put out there into the world? What was important to you to manifest or to set intentions around? Because it's likely to be completing, culminating or coming to fruition here in February, all right? For the